Well, hello again and welcome to another uh, lesson for PIC microcontrollers, uh, software and uh, hardware uh, construction. Uh, today we will be looking at analog to digital converters or ADCs. Um, I know um, some of you probably wanted to see some stuff on this because sometimes ADCs can kind of confuse a lot of people. And one thing that's kind of cool is that it's kind of something standard that's on most PICs. Um, I haven't really seen many that don't have an onboard ADC. And so I just wanted to go ahead and create a movie, uh, a few videos, and show you guys kind of some tips and tricks and some things that, uh, some issues and problems that I've run into and had to deal with when uh, using these analog digital converters uh, that you get in the real world. So I um, just wanted to share with you some uh, pointers and tips and tricks on how to work with one of these. What we're going to be doing today is something very simple. So we've got our schematic here. We're just going to read an analog value and display it um, in like a hyperterminal, basically. That's the reason we've got our RS-232 stuff. If you've watched previous movies, I show you how to um, connect this RS-232 transceiver and uh, what all the capacitors are for and uh, how to get a hyperterminal set up where you can print out to it. So um, I'm not going to be going through that too heavily just because it's been done in other videos. Um, we've got our voltage regulator here. We've got our 12 volt in got our uh, two uh, decoupling capacitors um, and our 5 volt coming out. So we got our VDD and our uh, 10K and then I, I like to put decoupling capacitors on it as well make sure and keep any noise out of it um, from any type of uh, irradiated stuff that may get in. Um, and then for our analog signal I'm just using a 5K ohm uh, potentiometer. And then for um, just to make sure no noise gets on there and make sure that's nice and clean, we put a 0.1 microfarad uh, decoupling capacitor on that as well to make sure that, that has no uh, no noise on it. And then we've got we're going to designate RC0 as uh, receive and uh, RC1 as transmit. And then that's going to come over to our DB9 connector to go to our computer. That's our Max 232 RS232 transceiver chip. And that's basically it. Now, I want to kind of, I'm going to click over to the data sheet here in a second, and I want to kind of go over um, some interesting things about this ADC, about the onboard ADC that's in here. So let's flip on over to our data sheet here. Okay, now this is the data sheet for the 16F676 chip got from Microchip's website, as you can see. Now, if you come over here, um, one thing we definitely want to look at is the, um, is the electrical features. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through here. Um, in fact, we can look at device overview. Okay, this device, um, it has an analog to digital converter um, and it has uh, about eight analog inputs and then a spot for an external reference as well. So basically we've got two ports of pins. Now the one thing I want to highlight is that these are on a data bus. These are all bussed together, they're not individual pins, and that is important um, when you look at the electrical specifications, which there should be uh, over here, you should see electrical specifications. Let's see, okay, here it is, electrical specifications, section 12. We click on this, we're going to come to our absolute maximum ratings that we're going to look at. And this tells you basically what this chip can handle. Now, one thing that we're going to see, I'm going to switch over to our highlight tool, is this right here. Maximum current sunk by port A and C. The big keyword that you want to see here is combined. That's what you want to see. That means all of the pins, all of the pins on port A and port C combined can only be 200 milliamps. You can only put 200 milliamps on all of it. So technically, if we go back up to our device overview, there looks like there is six pins per port, so that's a total of 12 pins. So that means, and we've got 200 milliamps divided by 12, you can only put about 16.6, 16.66-ish uh, uh, milliamps per pin. So that's going to be important when we look at the ADC because the ADC effectively syncs current and is how that it, you know, obviously current's got to go into it for it to basically read the voltage on it. So you have to be very careful with the ADC that you don't overload it. 
by placing too much current on something. So what, what I mean by that is a lot of people like to do voltage scaling because obviously they're trying to read a voltage that maybe is way too big for the chip. You know, it's larger than 5 volts. It's, you know, maybe 30 volt or 40 volt or something like that. And so they'll use scaling resistors um, and just do a volt divider and scale that voltage down to 5 volts. But the thing you have to remember is you have to be careful in your p in picking your scaling resistors because you may choose resistor sizes that may be so large thinking that well you just put in some massive resistors and that way you won't have a lot of current you know they won't draw you like if you're trying to create a voltmeter let's say well you want to have a huge resistance so that way you're hardly sinking any current so you can get as best of an open circuit voltage as you can well the problem with that is sometimes depending on your ADC like this one um, has a little bit better in that electrical specifications you've got a little bit better some of them will only be about 90 uh, milliamps per port or it's even lower so you have to really make sure that um, looking at looking at how much current that the it's actually going to push in sometimes when you make those resistors really big um, you'll actually suck a lot of current into the the pick because you'll be drawing it off of you know the middle of the two volt divider circuits and so it'll it'll actually you got to watch that make sure that your impedance is okay and, and there's a way to way to look at that um, we're gonna go ahead and look at the ADC section of this if you come over here to analog digital converter every uh, pick chip will have an ADC section if it has an ADC on board and it'll be the ADS A slash D converter and in here it's going to uh, give you kind of a lowdown of everything that you can do on the ADC and we'll I'm gonna come back to that uh, current problem here in a second. I'm going to go ahead and explain um, some of what's going on right here and then we'll we'll come back to I'll show you where um, there's a, a helpful little tip in the data sheet about how much current it can sink or at least watching out for how much current you push into the A to D. A, A to D. So anyway um, they give you kind of a quick little block diagram as they say. You basically have your uh, your pins and then this right here what this is that's talking about VDD and VREF what you can do is you always with a analog digital converters for those of you that don't know um, they always have to have a voltage reference something to be comparing these voltages that it's seeing to so it can get an accurate conversion so what you can do is a lot of times um, you can set one of the configuration uh, bits it's the v VCFG bit um, <coughs> the, which stands for voltage configuration bit you can either set it to 0 or 1 which will set it to either internal VDD power basically it ties this pin basically this voltage reference out of the ADC to its own uh, input power so VDD or it will tie it to pin RA1 in this case or AN1 or slash V reference it will tie it to this pin which will allow you to put an external voltage reference and basically that may be sometimes you can get you can use um, you, can, you, you can actually get precision voltage reference ICs basically you power them up and they will produce a filtered very clean very stable um, output voltage so that means you can if you need a 5 volt voltage reference or maybe you need uh, less or more or if you need a whatever voltage reference you can take and get a precision one and stick it in there because sometimes um, if having it connected to internal VDD sometimes if you have if you're running like a real high clock like a 20 megahertz clock um, and you're um, doing a lot of real high switching you're maybe <coughs> maybe you're doing some audio some audio stuff with an ADC and whatnot and so you're doing uh, lots of audio output out of the pick and things like that to like a DAC a digital to analog converter and so that where you've got lots and lots of things switching well could create a lot of noise internally in the pick so um, VDD may not be the best thing to connect your voltage reference to because it could be very very noisy and um, then tend to cause your ADC samples to basically kind of like oscillate a little bit like you'll have uh, your numbers will like flicker basically they'll they'll you'll have like let's say let's say you're measuring 5.2 volts the two may go from two to four we may go two four two four two four two and just flicker back and forth you know because of the of the noise that could be due to 
could be due to this. So you can attach an external voltage reference to this pin that's maybe a precision voltage reference that um, has a very intense filtering <coughs> already on board to uh, to filter to help um, keep that noise out of there so that, that way you get a good uh, ADC signal. But for the most part for th this that we're doing right here just using a potentiometer and <coughs> nothing more and nothing major the connecting it to VDD will be fine. And I'll show you how to programmatically do that too in the programming section of this, how to switch between those two and set this config bit. So um, that's basically what you've got. Oh, and then it's also got an internal transistor for AD on, and that's config bit. You can actually turn the ADC on and off if you want to, because when you turn the ADC on, it and then you set the go done bit, um, it will just take off and start sampling. Well, a lot of times, sometimes you may not want it to be just chunking all the time, so you can turn it on and off with the AD on bit, which, again, we'll see programmatically how to do that. And that's essentially what this is all telling you. Um, what's cool is the CCS C compiler, as well as the high tech C compiler, um, have some pretty simple uh, functions and things to set all of these config bits. Um, it'd be if you really want to pay attention to exactly where all this stuff is in memory and whatnot if you're going to be using assembly. Assembly code you'll definitely really need to know where but it's good to read through this um, especially for the high tech C users. Um, the, it will help you in understanding where it gets a lot of its functions and what the functions mean and where it's uh, grabbing its information um, so you need to really read through this ADC section and if you scroll on down you've got the operating uh, frequencies that it'll operate at depending on what your device frequency is it tells you basically that the sample rate that will do like 6.4 microseconds at 1.25 megahertz 4 megahertz 2 microseconds um, it'll tell you all that stuff um, gives you tables and everything and then this is where it tells you how the uh, datagrams are constructed. This one is going to be a 10-bit analog digital uh, format, so um, you've basically got 1024 to the 10th, so 1024 is your resolution, so to speak. And so it's going to show you, see like here's the AD con 0 um, register, which allows you to, see there's, that's where that V configuration bit lies, there's where it, it is, and if you look down, see there's that VCF. So this <coughs> this bit of this uh, datagram byte is the one that you can flip 0 or 1 to connect it to VDD or the V reference pin. So um, and then this is your channels, which channel you're selecting, whether it's AND 0 through 7. This is the go done bit. It uh, either tell you can flip it to 1 and make it go, and then it'll return to 0 when it's complete. Um, that way, and there's a there's a function I can show you um, that CCS has for checking that bit. Basically, if you want to know if you're waiting for the ADC to be done, you could halt your program and wait till the ADC is done, and then move on. Um, that way, you don't miss data or something. If you're waiting for specific datas and timing is an issue, you can watch this go done. And then, of course, then there's your AD on status. You can set that on and off. And then on down, um, there's the control register um, for your clock selection bits, conversion clock selection bits, um, because you can also do, now you don't have to worry about this in the CCSC, we'll see, there's a, a just a, a deal that you can set up that will set this. You can use, you can set up whether you want the clock to be internal, if you want it to be divided by 2, 8, 32, uh, 4, 16, you know, you can basically have half steps and whatnot. And that's what that that's what this is for. The next register, analog selection register. Um, this basically tells what pins because you can a lot of times, like what I've done, a lot of times you'll have um, like maybe port A and you'll have pins one and two, or maybe in our case just pin one. Like let's go back. Just pin one is the analog pin. Well if you set up everything as analog, then y let's say you want to switch some LEDs on and off depending on uh, where where the voltage is at from this pot. So if you hook them to the other AN ports, um, if they're all set up as analog, it's expecting analog signals and so you, you won't be able to you you won't be able to flip things high and low. You won't be able to flip those pins high and low. Even if you use the output high and output low 
uh, functions, you won't be able to flip pins high and low because they're all set up for analog. So what you so that's what this is for is you can set them up with a zero, which they're digital. Then you can flip them high and low, or you can s and then you can set the ones that you need for your analog inputs as one that sets it to a one. Which again, there's functions that take care of all this. I'm just kind of going through the low level stuff of how it how it what it's setting in the actual chip. So if we continue on. <coughs> Excuse me. If we continue on, here's where um, we're going to come back to that current thing. This is your data acquisition requirements. This will help you in calculating if you need to know the precise timing in which it it uh, it samples. You can use these equations. I'm not going to go through them because they're quite involved. But if you want to, you can look look through here and and see what uh, what to do to calculate that. Now, the main thing is this big bold thing right here. The maximum recommended impedance for analog sources is 10k. Now this is this is a it's a two-way street with analog digital converters. You don't want to push too much current into them, which obviously the first thing you think of the easiest way to solve that is well put a resistor in line with it. Which is true, that's what you do. To make sure you don't push too much current, you can put a resistor in line with it. Now us, so far as uh ours goes, we basically have a 5k resistor. If you twist the pot all the way to the max, you're going to get 5k. If you twist it all the way to zero, then you get barely even anything. You know, right? So we basically got zero to 5k is what we have here. So, so we don't have to worry about it too much, but what they're saying is if you put a resistor in to, you know, lower the current so that your current's not so big, don't get your resistor huge because if you get it greater than 10 ohms, if you put like a 20k ohm or a 100k ohm resistor in, thinking that you're gonna, you know, push the current down to just a few microamps, um, that's great for current. But now your voltage drop across that resistor is going to be so big that um, the ADC won't be able to read the voltage. The voltage is going to be way too small. So it's a two-way street. You got to watch your current, but then don't, you know, overdo it and overcompensate trying to get the current as small as you possibly can because then your voltage is going to shrink too and you won't be able the ADC won't be able to pick it up. So they're saying, "Hey, the largest you can do in line in series with it is a 10k ohm." And what's really cool is they give you this analog input model. They basically show you basically what's inside the chip on any of the analog inputs. Basically, see, here's your external stuff. This is like our potentiometer, basically, is what this is. And here's the pin. It's got some ESD protection. That's what this is. This is uh, some uh, static uh, discharge protection right here. It's showing you that there's a little bit of leakage current that goes on. And then they're showing you here's basically the sample switching. <coughs> well, this RSS, this is your... Um, internal sampling switch resistance okay so this is what's basically when it switches to take a sample this is the resistance that's going to be added to your series resistance and then the current's going to flow through both of these and charge this capacitor to ground so now to get an idea of what this is depending on what your VDD is if we're at 5 volt we're kind of mm, on this line you know, you're around 6.5 8 to 7 k ohms is what this is going to be. So that's where you figure if you've got something like a resistor divider out here, <coughs> to where you don't have a resistor that's in series, if you think about it, those two resistors, um, if you basically, here, let me, let me see if I can't give you guys, show you guys what I'm talking about. Let's do this a kind of a cheap way here. Show you what I'm talking about use Microsoft, good old Microsoft Paint. Basically, if you have a resistor, oh my goodness, this is going to be horrid looking. Anyway, <laughs> forgive my my drawing, this is horrible. Um, and let's say this is, oh my goodness, drawing with a mouse is not easy. This is 5 volt, okay? And then you're taking this off like this and coming into the ADC like this. A, D, C. What you're actually seeing inside this ADC is actually not just 
the ADC, but what you're seeing is you're actually seeing a resistor that's in series and then actually through a capacitor oh my goodness that's a horrible looking capacitor it looks like here let's do this there we go this is what you're seeing well technically if you remember in DC before the capacitor charges it's a short to ground so technically what you're seeing is you are seeing a if I can erase the well here maybe I can hit undo and do this there we go what this is actually doing is these are going to be in parallel now so see you're actually going to parallel combine with that RSS this is RSS you're actually going to parallel combine with that well sometimes depending on what your resistors are remember that because you'll parallel combine and you may push way more current than you should so that's where you got to be careful with your resistance your resistor sizes out here those of you that want to do voltage scaling of course I'm saying 5 volts that's, that's 15 volts there we go we're scaling it down to 5 volts um, be careful with that and then another thing while we're on uh, voltage scaling make sure and put for those of you that are going to do this put a Zener diode like a little 5.1 volt uh, Zener diode right here like do a 5 point look that bigger 5.1 volt zener diode. That way to make sure that in any case if a resistor burns up or, or it dies or gets shorted for some reason that 15 volts or whatever you have out here cannot get any bigger than 5.1 volts. The zener won't let it. It'll conduct it to ground whatever's left over and make sure that this doesn't damage this in here. But yeah this is your ADC is what this is and here's this is your port. So remember that RSS is there. Okay, that's my horrible drawing. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> but anyway, but that's what this is showing you here. And now, yeah, it's showing you that there's a little bit of uh, interconnected resistance, basically some line impedance that's less than a k ohm. So, so that's why I would say we're somewhere around 6.8. I'd bump it to seven, seven and a half k is what I do my calculations at. And so, but make sure you remember that because that's that's a big that's a big that's a biggie that that's in there so make sure and keep track of whatever uh, voltages that it's telling you and remember that you can don't get real crazy with trying to squeeze the current down because you'll you'll run into problems there as well and also um, but make sure you don't push too much current in and be mindful of your uh, resistor sizes so um, that's pretty much all I have for the hardware side so we will kick it off in part two. I'm sure this movie has gone long enough. I'll kick it off in part two with the uh, software. So we'll see you then. Thanks.